There is a way the president can have it both ways concerning his no boots on the ground commitment that would involve private military contractors. They are boots on the ground, but not technically the U.S. military. It is a dangerous job. The family of one CIA contractor killed in the Benghazi terror attacks is suing the U.S. government for $2 million now. The heirs of Glenn Doherty say the government had inadequate security at its facilities in the Libyan city. Tonight, correspondent Doug McElway reports on the people who do a lot of the dirty work while flying under the radar. As the debate in Washington rages over boots on the ground in the war against ISIS, one component of America's national security capability is quietly being left out of public discussion. Private security contractors, or PSC, uh, are security contractor. It's basically, uh, it, there's all different facets of it. I mean, for us, it was protection. It was protecting case officers, CI case officers overseas, doing low profile protection. From cooks to drivers, from maintenance people to bodyguards, contractors are increasingly taking over duties traditionally performed by troops. In the Foreign Service and spy agencies, contractor duties can run right up to the edge of what a combat soldier does. There are virtually no limits on what contractors can do except offensive air or ground combat operations. So virtually anything else with legal authority, which is granted, contractors can perform whatever the mission may be. Mark Geist, Chris Peranto, and John Teagan are contractors and subjects of the book 13 Hours, the inside account of what really happened in Benghazi. It's difficult to distinguish their qualities from those of a soldier. Indeed, most paramilitary contractors are former military. I have Crohn's disease, so military discharged me. I didn't know what I was going to do. So it was, it was a way for me to continue to work, earn a, you know, still have a job, but also do what I like doing, which was still soldiering, rangering. The pay is vastly better than soldiering. Contractors can earn $140,000 a year or more. As the war on terror has expanded, so has the federal government's reliance on contractors. DOD contractors' spending has nearly tripled from 2000 to 2008, while the State Department's expenditures more than quadrupled. The use of contractors offers advantages, allowing agencies to bypass the military chain of command, congressional debates over funding, as well as the semantic interpretations of what boots on the ground means. The White House will want to keep the whole contractor story out of the news. They can't pull it out of the regular force and make it happen without contractors. And frankly, there's many skilled, qualified, experienced contractors who can perform things that the military, quite frankly, can't do. Those advantages have drawn criticism that too much reliance on contracting risks an unaccountable mercenary force that weakens the democratic tradition of citizen soldiers. But contractors like the ones who defied orders to try to rescue besieged embassy staff in Benghazi will tell you they embody the best of America's warrior spirit, toughness, honor, and patriotism. Brett? Doug, thanks. Mark Geist, one of the contractors featured in Doug's report and also one of the co-authors of 13 Hours, has started a charity to aid the families of contractors killed or injured who, quote, serve their country silently behind enemy lines. The website is shadowwarriorsproject.org.